is a certain flair to a classic car that just draws people in. But it's usually not until we reach our golden years that we can afford to appreciate a classic in our garage, instead of just drooling over one as it passes us on the highway. Most classic car owners are, well, almost classic themselves. They've bought back a piece of their youth by restoring a hot rod they remember fondly from their childhood. But for Peyton, he bought his first classic car when he was just a kid. When I started off, I was really into mountain biking when I was like 10, 11 years old. And then my dad kind of came to me and was like, well, you know what? The bike is really expensive. It might be nice, but in a few years, you're going to be 16. You might want to get a car. I've always been into classic cars. Same with my dad. I just kind of felt, you know, why not start now? And then uh, when I'm 40, I don't have to go through a midlife crisis and buy one. So Peyton stacked up on classic car magazines and scrounged through wanted ads until he stumbled upon this beauty. I love uh, Firebirds and this body style was mostly because of uh, the movie Smoking the Bandit. One of my favorites, it's classic and uh, you know, everybody wants to be like, uh, like Bandit. Peyton became a little more like Bandit after the family spent three grand to get this ride. He was only 12 at the time. Peyton would still have four more years to go before he could even get behind the wheel for his first car chase. While he waited to take his driving test, Peyton spent time with his dad learning about the car. It was in good shape when they bought it, but they decided to add a few modifications to make it feel more like a hot rod. We redid the exhaust and the headers that come off the engine to make it sound a little bit more muscly, a little bit more power than stock, and uh, you know, more of a muscle car because uh, the 70s were a bit starved for power back in those days. This car is the second generation of Firebirds. The 1977 sported a V8 and V6 engine with a maximum of only 180 horsepower. It's a bit noisy compared to no cars nowadays. It's, you know, rumbly and uh, you, can, you can feel the road. Nothing too, uh, too teeth jattering. It was a perfect amount of power for Peyton to hit the open road for the first time. Power steering is like, uh, you know, you turn the wheel and that's where you're going to go. It's not quite like the modern cars where it's kind of a bit heavier. This is more of a floating car. These cars are, you know, back to basics almost, if you will. Um, it's just so, I don't know, raw almost. It also can bring families, you know, together, dads and daughters, you know, fathers and sons, you know, what have you, to uh, start a project and bond a little between each other. Peyton says he hopes more young people will get into the hobby of restoring classic cars. He says he has no intentions of selling his classic, but if someone by chance wanted to trade for a Ferrari F40, he'd gladly make the deal. Peyton, maybe that can be your next classic car once you hit 30. In Qualicum, I'm Ryan the Plant.